Today we want to talk about the male reproductive system. There will be two parts. The first part has to do with spermatogenesis, identifying the different uh, spermatogenic cells, uh, and also look at the endocrine aspect of it. The second part has to do with uh, excurrent ducts uh, and secretory glands of the male reproductive system. Thank you. The male reproductive system, part one, spermatogenesis. In part one, we want to identify the endocrine and exocrine divisions of the testis, and we want to distinguish the cells of the spermatogenic lineage. Part two will be the excurrent ducts, but part one has to do with spermatogenesis. And here we can see the main organ uh, of the male reproductive tract, the testis, and here we can see in blue the epididymis, the ductus deferens, comes up to the prostate, and then you go through the penourethra out for exit, or sperm to exit, uh, the testis. In the capsule of a testis, there's uh, arteries and veins on the surface, as we'll see uh, in a little bit. Here we see the human testis. Uh, and the tunica albuginea, or white coat, has been reflected back there. So the testis is here. The epididymis is here. The ductus deferens, you see the coil of the ductus deferens. And the spermatic cord, where blood vessels and nerves uh, go in and out uh, of the testis. If we look in here, we can see little uh, wiggle things in there. Those are the seminar tubules. You can see one here deflected back in through there, and those uh, end in the reedy testa tubules, which go to the uh, efferent ducts, and then from the efferent ducts that go to a single ductus epididymis that we'll talk about uh, in part two. But for our purposes today, uh, you have the capsule uh, here with septa that run in through there, not complete, but they are uh, projections that go uh, in through there, and they carry blood vessels uh, as well as nerves. Now, the main exocrine function of the testis is, of course, the production uh, of a spermatozoa. And here you can see a human spermatozoa, and there's a nucleus there uh, and the middle piece. And you see some uh, epididymal sperm uh, there as well from the, from the human. If we look at the horse, we can see some uh, structures in a little more detail. There's a nucleus, uh, the, the series of, of, of membranes in through there, uh, and the uh, the, the middle piece with the principal piece, here's the spermatozoa, and as we, as we can see it. If we look uh, uh, at the, uh, at the uh, head of the sperm, we can see the nucleus, the uh, nuclear membrane, uh, the interacrosomal membrane, outer acrosomal membrane, and then the plasma membrane uh, uh, surrounds the whole uh, works. Later on, we'll talk about acrosome reaction, where the plasma membrane fuses with the outer acrosome membrane, and that would discharge the enzymes that are in the acrosome. Uh, if we look at the tail, uh, tail part, we see the mitochondria surround the tail. You have these nine dense fibers, and then you have an axoneme. Axoneme is composed of nine doublet microtubules with a central pair. And you can follow that action name all the way through down to the end piece, beyond the principal piece and to the end piece. Uh, and these, each of the doublets become two singlets. Here we see 19, there should be 20 altogether. At this point, you see some doublets and singlets uh, at the very end. Here we can see the nice action name in through there with a fiber sheath around the outside, which facilitates uh, a movement. So we have uh, nine microtubules. Uh, plus a central pair, uh, and in the, in the upper portion of the tail, we have these dense fibers as well, which are uh, thought to give rigidity uh, to the, the sperm. As the sperm go through the epididymis, uh, they lose the, uh, the uh, big, uh, wide arc uh, as the, uh, uh, these dense fibers are stabilized by those disulfide bonds. If we look in the fetal testis, we can see there's interstitial cells there. Here's the seminar for tubules. Uh, and in there, we have the pre cells, which is the bulk of these nuclei we see are pre cells. But we also have gonocytes. These clear cells in through here uh, are the gonocytes that will uh, make spermatogonia and then the other cells 
uh, later on at puberty. So the individual is born with spermatogonia or uh, uh, those uh, cells that ultimately will make uh, spermatogonia and they will not get uh, primary spermatocyte spermatids until puberty. Uh, here we see the capsule of a testis and the semifertubules with interstitial uh, thing with connective tissue through and through there with uh, blood vessels. If we look at the real testis, we can see the capsule and there's major blood vessels, arteries and veins, even lymphatics are located in the capsule uh, here. And then uh, we can see blood vessels in, inside the testis as well, semifertubules, uh, elytic cells in through there, but you do have major blood vessels uh, surrounding uh, the, the testis in the capsule, which has facilitated uh, uh, some of the cooling aspects of the testis. And here we can see uh, that indeed uh, the testis is lined by the mesothelium. Mesothelium here, here, and here. We can see uh, the cells there uh, in the uh, capsule. In the capsule, we can see there's nerves as well. Nerves, lymphatics. Uh, are found there and this this capsule of course is the tunic abigini or the white coat uh, that's reflected back in this system. Now around each of these seminar for tubules you have blood uh, vessels and you can see a cast of those blood vessels uh, that surrounds uh, the tubules. Now the seminar for tubules are the main players that produce the exocrine function of the testis. Uh, and they're composed of three cells. One cell is a myoid cell that marks the limit of the cinder tubules. And then inside there you have another somatic cell, which is a Sertoli cell. So here we see a couple of Sertoli cell nuclei in through there. But actually Sertoli cells rate start from the base and they go all the way to the lumen. And the dots that we see in here are really a Sertoli cell mitochondria. There's also germ cells. And germ cells are of three types too. You have the spermatogonia. Uh, there's light and dark spermatogonia, but we have spermatogonia. The next we have spermatocytes, and then we have spermatids. So we have three different uh, types of, of germ cells located in the testis with the most primitive ones, the younger ones, at the base and the more advanced ones uh, at the lumen where they will be released. So here we see interstitial cells, but then here's a cinder for tubule. You can see mature spermatids just about be released, and younger spermatids in through there, primary spermatocytes, spermatogonia uh, in through the base, and then we see uh, Sertoli cells as well. So if we look at a, a real specimen, uh, we can see uh, the uh, spermatogonia on the base. We have those that are, that are, are, are pale. We have those that are dark. So the ones that are diff two different types of spermatogonia identified uh, in humans. Uh, and then we have their primary spermatocytes. Uh, that's one generation of the primary spermatocytes. These guys here, big ones too. The biggest ones in there are primary spermatocytes, but these guys are too. These are just one cycle length uh, younger uh, than, than, than these guys. Uh, also, we have Sertoli cells. So from primary spermatocytes, you have secondary spermatocytes, I should have said, sorry. Secondary spermatocytes, we do have Sertoli cells in through here and there and there, but uh, 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 now we have secondary spermatocytes and then they give rise to spermatids. You have the round spermatids and then you have the elongated spermatids. Uh, so we have the spermatogonia, spermatocytes, spermatids, and we see two generations of spermatids, the ones that are round and ones that are elongated, and we see two generations of primary spermatocytes. Uh, these would be pacotine and these would be like lepatine primary spermatocytes. And we do have Sertoli cells, as I mentioned, here, here, uh, and there we can see there's another part of a Sertoli cell nucleus uh, right through there. So uh, if we want to see secondary spermatocytes, which are hard to uh, fine because they're only in one stage of a cycle. What we need to look is for meiotic activity. Meiotic activity, we can see cell divisions uh, occurring there. That is, a, uh, the um, primary spermatocytes are dividing into secondaries, and then we can see the secondary spermatocytes who, who are intermediate in size between the primary spermatocytes uh, and these of, of spermatids. So these guys here are bigger uh, than the spermatids that are produced. It's a precursor uh, to 
the uh, secondary spermatocyte, secondary spermatocyte gives rise to the spermatids. Uh, on the slide 92, we can see some secondary spermatocytes, and the way you would do that is look for uh, metaphase figures uh, in meiosis. Not mitosis now, but in meiosis. If you find those, you can likely find some secondary spermatocytes sent in through there. And here we can see that secondary spermatocytes appear in stage six of the cycle. We'll talk about those in a minute. But these are secondary spermatocytes sent through here. Uh, and these are the packeting primary spermatocytes that gave rise to these guys. And these ultimately will divide to give you spermatids. So we have spermatogonia, spermatocytes, secondary spermatocytes, and, uh, and maturing spermatids. Uh, if we have a fibroblast that's located uh, in the testis, uh, we also have Sertoli cells located in through there. We have the myoid cells, as we mentioned, usually the first layer of, my, my, of, of the cells that surround the tubule. In, t in the human testis, though, there's uh, more than one layer uh, of myoid cells, and you have a spermatogonia. A spermatogonia are located, um, uh, there's one right there, right here, uh, uh, as we can see, and then these are lytic cells as well. In the testes, we can see the tunica beginning again, which is a white coat, uh, uh, and we can uh, look in there, see similar tubules, um, mature spermatids are just about to be released, and they have residual bodies left behind. So the excess cytoplasm of these mature spermatids is left behind. So these are mature spermatids. These round here are uh, the immature spermatids. Uh, we have Sertoli cells and through here and here. Uh, uh, and we have the myoid cells that uh, mark the limit of the tubule with Leydig cells uh, in the interstitium. And you can see uh, the basement membrane of the Sertoli cells uh, in through there. You can see it right there. Uh, which is a higher mag in through here, and we can see it here too. This one shows you uh, that the, uh, the, the basal lamina actually is what we're seeing because it's thickened uh, in some cases, uh, thick enough here that we can actually uh, see, uh, see it. Uh, in the testis, we can see dividing cells in mitosis. Um, I remember before we looked at meiosis, these are ones in meiosis, but these are ones in mitosis, so these would be the spermatogonia dividing to ultimately produce uh, primary spermatocytes. Mature spermatids, uh, 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 as we see here, attach these are late spermatids, Sertoli cells, and then once it's released, it's known as a spermatozoan. So spermatids are attached, spermatozoa uh, are, uh, have been released. And here we can see again late spermatids. Uh, spermatids, uh, Sertoli cells, my, uh, the myoid cells, primary spermatocytes, and Leydig cells. So we have the spermatogonia located on the base. We have the spermatocytes, which are the biggest ones, and then we have the spermatids. And here we see two generations of spermatids, a younger group and an older group. And they start out with a round cell, with a round nucleus, uh, and then you get uh, development of the acrosome, it forms a little cap, and then ultimately uh, the t tail has developed. And in fact, the three different types of germ cells, spermatogonia, spermatocytes, and spermatids, uh, uh, mark the three major divisions uh, of spermatogenesis, which is spermatocytogenesis, or mitosis, meiosis, and spermiogenesis. There's no counterpart to this in the female reproductive system. goes from a round cell to elongated cell characteristics of species without uh, uh, any cell division. So those three divisions of spermatogenesis, spermatocytogenesis, where you have mitotic activity, of, you see a several uh, divisions occur, ultimately to produce uh, primary spermatocytes. And now you're in meiosis. Then meiosis uh, divides to produce secondary spermatocytes and then divides one more time to produce spermatids. And going from round cell to that one shaped like a sperm uh, is spermiogenesis. Spermatocytogenesis, meiosis, and spermiogenesis. Uh, and, and in that process, they leave behind residual bodies or the excess cytoplasm that they no longer need. 
So the first division uh, phase uh, is a spermatocytogenesis, and it has two functions. It produces primary spermatocytes, which result in production of sperm uh, so many days later. So it produces the next cell layer. It also produces uh, stem cells, stem cells that carry on the lineage throughout the, the life uh, of, of the male. You can have paternity uh, at uh, over 90, degree, 90 years old, but not so for maternity. But you can have paternity because the stem cells continue uh, to, uh, to produce uh, germ cells throughout the adult life if the, the man is normal. Meiosis uh, also has two uh, functions. One, exchange of genetic materials between the homologous chromosomes, the lepatine, zygotine, pacotine, dipatine, uh, steps uh, of development. So one thing is exchange the chromosomes. You're not like your brother or your sister because they have different genetic exchange than you did. Also produce, produce a haploid condition. So if you got one division uh, uh, and one duplication, as in mitosis, you end up uh, with uh, a two in individual. However, if you have meiosis and have one uh, duplication chromosomes with two divisions, you end up with a haploid number, half the number of chromosomes, so that the male and female will each contribute half the number of chromosomes together. It will make a two in individual when fertilized. And so here we can see uh, the uh, events uh, during meiosis. You get duplication of the chromosomes and crossing over to occur at the synaponema complex. And then at the uh, secondary spermatocytes, at, at the first division, you produce secondary spermatocytes, which are still duplicated, but they're, only, they're already haploid uh, in, in number of chromosomes that they have. Either have Xs or Ys, don't have both of them. Uh, and then finally, the second mitotic division produces uh, the individual either X or Y, uh, and it would not be duplicated uh, at that point in time. So the primary spermatocytes contain 46 chromosomes, even though they're duplicated, uh, and then the secondary spermatocytes have 23 duplicated, uh, and then uh, uh, the spermatid. Uh, has 23 chromosomes, which are the haploid number versus the diploid number uh, of uh, normal somatic cells. And here we see uh, a, a primary spermatocyte with a synaponema complex. The synaponema complex is where you have the crossing over occur. And here we can see the crossing over occur. If this is papa and this is mama, uh, the chromosomes are duplicated. And some people would say this is 4N at this point in time. For you, a lepatine, a pacotine, that's an aponema complex. You get exchange between papa and mama. And the first monic division separate the duplicated mama, a papa, from a duplicated uh, mama. And then the second monic division would uh, separate the two uh, uh, duplications uh, of the papa and also the mama. And that would give you four. Spermatid. So this is a synaponema complex running through there, which is what we see in the packetine primary spermatocytes. So here we see a Sertoli cell nucleus here with the uh, mitochondria steaming in through there as opposed to the mitochondria of the spermatid. So here's a Sertoli cell nucleus here and here, and these are primary spermatocytes. Here we see this a cytoplasm bridge between these adjacent cells. We'll talk about that uh, a little later on. So we have spermatogonia, spermatocytes, spermatids, and mature spermatids, as we can see. If we look at a higher mega, this spermatid through here, uh, this is the nucleus. There's the uh, Golgi apparatus, which is going to give rise to the acrosome. And here's a centriol. Centriol is not associated with the membrane in the beginning. Uh, and you can see the developing tail already started uh, from uh, this spermatid within the cytoplasm itself, and we call this the Golgi phase. Spermatids where they're just forming a little uh, acrosome uh, from the Golgi apparatus uh, that we see right here. And then in mature spermatids, we can see the manchette. This is a corset of microtubules surrounding the tail and associated with elongation uh, of, the, of the nucleus. So these are 
uh, mitochondria of the Sertoli cells here, the mitochondria of the germ cells are quite different. So uh, that brings us to uh, spermogenesis. Spermogenesis is differentiation from around cell to those that are shaped like a sperm. The acrosome is formed. Here you see the Golgi apparatus forming the, uh, the little, little vesicle, forms a head cap, elongation of the nucleus, mitochondria move in around the tail is what you have, and then the excess cytoplasm uh, is shed. So you get the shaping, condensation of the nucleus, uh, the, the, actually the chromatin is modified to help uh, protect it uh, during its travels to try to find an egg. Uh, uh, nucleus shape, nuclear condensation occurs, you get the tail formation, these are some of the changes. And we can see those uh, in the horse. This is the, uh, the nucleus of a spermatid, there's the Golgi apparatus, Golgi apparatus forming little uh, vesicles which then fuse together to press against the nucleus and then it forms a cap and here we can see the cap phase uh, in through there and the manchette starts to appear we get elongation of the nucleus we see the manchette here and here uh, nucleus is becoming more condensed finally very condensed and whenever the manchette disappears then the annulus which is uh, this region right in through there which is where the tail is developed from because uh, this uh, annulus uh, surrounds uh, the axoneme. Uh, it the annulus surrounds uh, the the centriole, which gives rise to developing uh, axoneme and flagellum. Uh, and at this point in time, when it migrates down, mitochondria move in around the middle piece, and that's what we're seeing here. Mitochondria moving in, and the annulus, which was located next to the head, is now located in its permanent position. Uh, where it's going to be located in a mature sperm at the end of the mitochondria. And then we have mitochondria in through there, the annulus located in through there, uh, condensation of uh, the nucleus. So we get uh, nuclear shape, nuclear uh, condensation, uh, development of the acrosome, and development of the tail. And that's basically the various things that go on uh, during spermiogenesis, where you have the Golgi phase, the cap phase, the acrosome phase and the maturation phase. Now, the acrosome, the function of the acrosome is to, it's, it's like a, it's a lysosome, uh, and it has enzymes, enzyme necessary to penetrate through the egg. So what happens there in the acrosome reaction is that the, uh, the plasma membrane fuses with the outer acrosomal membrane in a series of these vesicles. See, these vesicles are the fusion of the two, and that discharges the enzyme in that area, and, and they're at the necessary for penetration, uh, uh, enzymatic digestion, a uh, part of the egg for the for the nucleus to penetrate through. So in spermogenesis, you have a round cell, and you development uh, of the of the uh, acrosome. We call that the Golgi phase, and then the cap phase becomes. You can see the darkened uh, acrosome uh, located in through there. Uh, elongation phase of the nucleus, uh, which is, uh, and then we have the maturation phase where you have mitochondria moving in around the tail. And we can see the maturation phase, condensation of the nucleus and mitochondria, and we end up with the mature product, uh, which is the mitochondria uh, located from the, from the uh, nucleus all the way to the to the annulus right in through there, uh, the dense fibers we're seeing there, and the axoneme in there as we've talked about uh, talked about before. So uh, you get condensation of the nucleus, uh, development of acrosome, and development uh, of the flagellum. We see spermatids here in these uh, EMs. This is the nucleus, nucleus here. Uh, this is acrosomic vesicle, and this is the Golgi apparatus uh, producing it. And you can see it has a host of enzymes located in through there. And here we see the axoneme uh, of developing tails uh, from uh, uh, probably spermatids uh, is what that is because it only has an axoneme. I don't see the fiber sheath. Uh, or it could be uh, sperm uh, from uh, different species, non mammalian species. Um, uh, here we can see uh, developing in the horse, we can see the a spermatid nucleus, and this is the cap, the cap being formed. So this is right after this acrosomic vesicle, we start to form a cap. 
uh, in through there. Here you see the, the Golgi apparatus, uh, and this is staining for acid phosphatase. Acid phosphatase is in the mature phase of the Golgi apparatus, and you can see the vesicles which are transporting it from the Golgi uh, to the acrosome. So this is a source uh, of these vesicles, transport vesicles, is a source of getting the, the enzymes which were pro produced in the raffinoplasia reticulum, modified in the Golgi apparatus, and then deposited uh, in the in the acrosome during uh, spermiogenesis. Also, I mentioned the manchette, and here we see the manchette is a, a corset uh, of microtubules, and it occurs during elongation of the nucleus and occurs before mitochondria move in around around the tail. And so here we see the whole scheme of things: spermatogonia, uh, spermato, uh, uh, spermatocytes developing. Finally, you get secondary spermatocytes, and then uh, spermiogenesis occurs. So we got uh, spermatocytogenesis, we got meiosis, uh, and then we got spermiogenesis and development of sperm. The last phase is, as I mentioned, whenever the annulus here moves down, as you see it's moved down here, then all of a sudden mitochondria can move in around the tail, and that's what occurs. And then finally, the last thing is that uh, the uh, spermatids are still attached to their residual cytoplasm. You can see these cytoplasmic stalks, which attacks these, and this can be discarded. Uh, here you can see the Satoli cells are involved in this process. These are residual bodies, uh, some of which are still attached to one another, and they'll be left behind uh, whenever this spermatozoa is released. These are Satoli cells, and the Satoli cell will phagocytize. Uh, uh, the residual body. So totally cells also phagocytize degenerating germ cells uh, as well. So here we can see the residual bodies of these mature spermatids just about to be released, these spermatozoa which has already been released, and this is the residual cytoplasm as you drew there and there, and this is the residual cytoplasm that we can see, and this is how it looks uh, in our H and E. These is, uh, we can see those again, these are the spermatids, and these are their residual cytoplasm that's still stuck up there. Here in the horse, we can see the height of the semifrotic epithelium, uh, and there's a higher mag of this area, and you can see the cytoplasmic stalks which connect uh, the spermatids to their residual cytoplasm. And also, you can also note that the generation, the next generation, so if these are seniors, then these would be juniors, uh, the younger spermatids, the ones that are around nuclei, are projecting out uh, into the lumen, and here we see the, the mitochondria swollen uh, middle piece uh, of the mature spermatids and the younger spermatids, a little bit of tail flagellum uh, that we see there. And so if we look at a scanning EM of the testes, we can see there's a host of germ cells uh, and uh, almost always have uh, some sperm uh, in the lumen. Uh, if we look at the infertile man, we can get a view for the Sertoli cells because they only have few germ cells. These are spermatogonia at the base. And then these are the Sertoli cell nuclei. Characteristic of Sertoli cells is it has a big nucleolus. Uh, it also has an indented nuclear envelope. You can see the indentations. And it had a euchromatic nucleus. All those are indicative of metabolically active cells. So we see the mitochondria that we see here are really from the uh, Sertoli cells, and they are extend from the base uh, to the lumen, and they take odd shapes. You can see the elephant here, the alligator. You can see Pac-Man, uh, different things you can see in the shape uh, of the uh, Sertoli cell nucleus. Sertoli cells provide support. You can see the Sertoli cell, uh, and they are responsible for the blood uh, testis barrier, where they divide the semifrotopithelium into two compartments. You have the basal compartment where you have the spermatogonia located, something that appeared before the immune system was developed. Uh, and then you have the primary spermatocytes and spermatids uh, inside uh, the barrier itself. But they provide uh, nutritional support uh, because uh, the epithelium itself has no blood vessels. All the all the nutrients have to come in uh, through the uh, Sertoli cells or between the Sertoli cells. Uh, they phagocytize developing germ cells is one of the things that they they do. If they die, they, they uh, uh, get rid of them. 
They also produce antigen binding protein, so they produce a protein that holds testosterone in the vicinity. Uh, Calmodulin, plasma activated protein, they have to open and close, and so these are some proteins that are characteristic for Sertoli cells. They also secrete inhibin, which inhibits FSH because FSH is what st stimulates Sertoli cells. Um, proliferation early on and then also uh, function. And they also produce activin, which stimulates so, uh, 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 FSH uh, to be produced. And the blood tested barrier, as I mentioned, uh, divides the basal and the abdominal compartments. So Sertoli cell contribute to uh, spermogenesis through the nurse-like function, providing uh, uh, physical and metabolic support are developing germ cells uh, and uh, in the case of spermogenesis itself in terms of release uh, of the uh, spermatids. If you uh, uh, deprive uh, uh, testes of FSH, uh, you will, uh, uh, the release is not at the appropriate uh, stage uh, of the cycle. So FSH appears to be important uh, in um, uh, spermogen, uh, spermia, uh, spermiation, which is the counterpart uh, to ovulation. So here we see the Sertoli cell cytoplasm in the EM21. This is the nucleus of the Sertoli cell. We can see lots of uh, microtubules in Sertoli cell. This one here too, you see the Sertoli cell nucleus here. Uh, mitochondria, there's uh, primary spermocytes here and here. We see the synaponema complex in a couple places. Uh, Golgi in the uh, in the Sertoli cell, uh, we can see lipid uh, uh, heterophagic uh, uh, vacuoles uh, in the Sertoli cell, uh, and we can't see it this mag, but there's very, very long uh, microtubules uh, that are located in Sertoli cells. Now, uh, the three different uh, phases of spermatogenesis, uh, spermatocytogenesis, mitosis, and and uh, spermogenesis uh, can be combined to divide the testis into the different stages of the cycle. And these the six stages is characteristic of humans, even though uh, more current papers have uh, divided uh, uh, into uh, additional uh, stages, about uh, 12 stages. And here we can see the different stages of the cycle. Uh, and different things that are going on uh, at different stages of the cycle uh, where you have uh, secondary spermatocytes, uh, mostly round spermatids or elongated spermatids uh, characteristic uh, of the different uh, cells that we see uh, in the process. Uh, and if you followed uh, a given cell through the development scheme, you can see that these are the different stages of the cycle, one through six, one through six, one through six, one through six. Uh, and at different times, it would take about seven to four days to produce sperm uh, from the first division to occur. But while uh, that cell is being produced, you have released the sperm uh, about four times uh, that they have been, uh, been released uh, in the process. So an individual takes seven to four days but sperm are released over 16 days uh, in humans. Another characteristic uh, of the Sertoli cell function is the blood uh, tested barrier. And here we can see the aluminal compartment uh, located here and the basal compartment. The basal compartment is where, uh, this is where albumin has been injected. So we see albumin in through there and albumin can go in around uh, this spermatogonia, but it cannot go into the uh, primary spermatocytes. And here you can see uh, uh, a radio opaque, uh, electron opaque uh, dye that goes in around the spermatogonia and abruptly stops. Uh, and this is a tight junction between adjacent stratoid cells responsible for uh, the blood tested barrier. And here you can see the blood tested barrier here. Uh, and here it's above the spermatogonia for the spermatocytes uh, and spermatids. And here you can see in our scheme of the developing cell, they first start out uh, outside the barrier and then they're inside the barrier whenever they become uh, uh, 
The prelepatine is what migrates through, and then you get the lepatine, pacotine, zacatine, and then you have uh, spermogenesis ultimately to release sperm. You also have these intracellular bridges that I mentioned to you. Uh, you can see those. They are incomplete cytokinesis, namely that you have nuclear division without total cell division, uh, and they're found in clusters, uh, either among spermatogonia or among spermatocytes or among spermatids, but never uh, between a spermatocyte and a spermatid. They're always in the same uh, developmental uh, age. And a possible function is to coordinate development uh, of germ cells. And also, uh, uh, in spermatogenesis, there's an overkill of number of, of potential cells to divide. And what happens is you end up with too many and they have to degenerate. Uh, and so uh, it synchronizes uh, degeneration, uh, eating up a whole group uh, at one time if it needs to. And here you can see the intracellular bridges. Uh, and interesting enough, uh, uh, the uh, what goes through uh, is the prelepatine primary spermatocyte uh, that goes through the barrier as we see there. And remember that's in this scheme of meiosis. Uh, and interesting enough, uh, they have to go with the bridges and all through the barrier. And what happens is uh, the um, the uh, Sertoli cell uh, creates the barrier below the the zygotine primary spermatocytes um, and uh, above as well and then finally this is broken off and you just have a barrier at the bottom that way it maintains a barrier for the cell that has gone through so not only do you have cells that have to go through the from the uh, from the basal to the luminal compartment through these uh, junctions uh, you all, they're also connected to one another with these intracellular bridges which makes it more complicated now in addition to the to the germinal cells that we see there uh, in the cellular tubules, we got uh, elytic cells. Uh, we see a host of these elytic cells in humans. They even have a crystalline structure that we see uh, in this particular slide. But these others are elytic cells too uh, in humans. And elytic cells have the uh, euchromatic nucleus, uh, very big nucleolus, uses spherical, <clears throat> but not in all species. It is in humans. Uh, and there are lots of smooth venoplasmic reticulum. A lipofuse and granules and lipid can be seen, uh, but even the gap junctions between adjacent Sertoli cells to increase their communication. So a host of smooth venoplasmic reticulum, even though they do have some uh, rough VR, uh, big nucleolus, uh, euchromatic nucleus, uh, as we can see. So in terms of hormonal control of spermatogenesis, it's a little more complicated than we thought it would in the beginning. Of course, there are genes associated with the different uh, divisions uh, of the germ cells as well. But FSH uh, certainly stimulates immature Sertoli cells. It's more difficult in mature Sertoli cells to figure out uh, how it works. But spermatocytogenesis and spermiation, uh, as I mentioned, uh, are related to FSH in some species. LH stimulates uh, uh, elytic cells to produce testosterone, which is important uh, in in meiosis. <clears throat> uh, oddly enough, sometimes we have Sertoli cells um, that are located where they should be, and sometimes they're located where they should not be. I don't know why they would be in a nerve, but this is an odd thing that look like Sertoli uh, cells. And certainly these are elytic cells, and they look the same inside the nerve, which is an odd thing. So in summary, we talked about uh, the fetal testes, which have the gonocytes and the free Sertoli cells. We talked about the capsule and the seminiferous tubules. And the tubules composed of different cells, the myoid cells, Sertoli cells, and then three types of germ cells. And these germ cells divide spermatogenesis in three major divisions. You got uh, spermatocytogenesis, meiosis, and spermogenesis. Uh, that occurs, and we can identify the different cells. You can see the development of an individual cell, and the main product, exocrine product, is a spermatozoan that we go through here. The endocrine product uh, uh, is mainly one is testosterone produced by the Leydig cells, uh, but you also have other hormones as well, inhibiting 
uh, and uh, active infirm digital toilet cells uh, as well. Also, uh, lytic cells can produce uh, estrogens too uh, on some species. Here we see a host of, of uh, books, uh, magazines, and uh, websites where uh, these pictures, most of them were taken. Some of them I, I took myself, but most of them were taken from there. And that's the end of the male reproductive system, part one, uh, spermatogenesis. Thank you.